Okay, so we are in chapter 4 talking about different tissues. Right now we're talking about epithelium and where you will find them in the body, what they look like, and what their function is. So in this picture here we see simple squamous, which means it has one layer of squashed or squished squamous cells. They're flat like a pancake, as opposed to these, which are cuboidal. So um, in the body you'll find simple squamous epithelium in places that need to have high filtration. Now, if you you don't have to memorize all these things, but if you understand, you can think about it logically and it'll make sense. So picture um, simple squamous as like a sheet, a very thin sheet. And picture something that is um, maybe got more layers, like this one over here. This is stratified, which means it has multiple layers. Picture this like a comforter, like a big thick quilt. Now, if I were to take a cup of water and pour it on top of the sheet and pour it on top of the comforter, it would more easily pass through the thin sheet, just like it would more pa easily pass through the thin layer of squamous, simple squamous epithelium. So you'll find these in the body where you need there to be high filtration or things to be able to pass in and out easily. So the one example they give you here is the kidneys, because the kidneys, they filter the blood and they filter out all the wastes, um, all the things that shouldn't be there and excretes in the urine. So there has to be high ability to have filtering in the kidneys, so this is where you'll find those. Other places are like the blood vessels, um, because a lot of um, molecules have to move in and out of the bloodstream, so the blood vessels, like the veins and stuff, are going to be made out of these. Um, now let's talk about the columnar here. Now columnar and cuboidal typically are going to be involved with secreting and absorbing things. You wouldn't typically see a squamous cell being involved with secreting or absorbing because they don't have much surface area, they don't have much volume or surface area, they're really small, they don't have any space to absorb anything or even secrete stuff. But these columns have more space in them and they're larger so they have like room or capacity to do um, secreting and absorbing. Now one place in the body that is very important with absorbing is in the intestines. When you eat your food and you digest it in the stomach and all the vitamins and fats and um, proteins, all that stuff, goes into the intestines, they have to be um, broken down so they can absorb into the bloodstream. And so this is um, where you'll find these types of cells, um, the columnar, where absorption is very important. Without those being in your intestines, you wouldn't be able to absorb any of the nutrients that you're eating, and that would be bad. All right, now back to this one, the stratified epithelium. This is, you'll find these in places that need a lot of protection. So see, there's multiple layers here to act as a really good barrier and protective surface, whereas this would not act as a very good protective lining because, like, it's very, very, very thin and it wouldn't offer any protection at all. So you'll find these in places like the skin. Your skin goes through a lot all day long, getting bumped and scraped and pushed into things. So this is helpful because um, it protects the underlying surfaces underneath. You'll also, not just your skin, you'll also find them... Um, in places like the inside of your mouth and in your esophagus. And that might be surprising, but if you think about it, you have to do a lot of chewing and crunching in your mouth. So, like, you need to have protection there, too. Because if you had just a thin layer, it would slice into your, into your, um, into your blood vessels and you'd start bleeding a lot and everything. Um, now one thing, notice about, you know, skin cells on your, in your skin versus in your mouth is that one is wet and one is dry. And we mentioned... In another video that keratin is a protein that surrounds a cell so it says here it says keratinized um, here's a drawing I did um, so these are two epithelial cells this one um, one of them is gonna be in your mouth and one of them is gonna be in your skin now keratin is like this protective coating coating that covers over the cell it's a protein and it acts like a raincoat so it kind of keeps the cell dry and water repellent so that none of the moisture can like it won't be it won't be wet it'll be dry and this one is non-keratinized there's no keratin so that means it's wet it doesn't have protection from the raincoat so to speak so keratinized cells would be like the skin uh, of your arms and legs and face and stuff and this would be the skin of the cells of like the inside of your mouth and in your esophagus and stuff like that so that's why it says here location keratinized primarily in the skin Non-keratinized, the mouth, the throat, esophagus, and other places. Uh, the non-mentionables. Anyway, so that's that.
Um, now this one is stratified cuboidal because it's got more than one layer, so it's stratified and cuboidal because it's cubes. These you will find that make up the glands. So like the pituitary gland, the parotid gland, the all those glands that secrete stuff. Now someone asked me what does it really mean to secrete and how I explained it was like, you know those little gushers that we used to eat when we were kids that like you'd squeeze them and like the, the liquids would squirt out? Well it's kind of like that. Like that's what secreting really means. Um, so I kind of explained this is like a big pack of gushers and they all of them together make glands and glands are responsible for like secreting like different things like hormones or sweat or saliva or mucus. So if you just think of this as like a big gusher pack, you can remember that's like um, the glands, make up the glands. Now the only other two that are left that are important really are the pseudostratified columnar. We talked about this in another video. Um, they look like they're stratified because it looks like they have multiple layers, but they're really not. This is all just one column. This is one, one. There's not like another group of columns sitting on top of it. And then they've got this cilia, which is like little hair particles that come off the top of the cell. And you'll find these in the lungs and the respiratory tract, like the, the trachea and the bronchioles and stuff. Because like when your lungs get fill up with fluid, you don't want that there because you'll get pneumonia and all that stuff, which is bad. So like the little hair is kind of like flush the, the mucus out and like help you cough it out so you don't get like infections and stuff. And the last one is transitional epithelium. These are cool. You find these in the bladder because as, well, the bladder, okay, when it's empty and it's not, the, there's no water to like put pressure on it to make it expand, it's going to show up as cuboidal cells. But as the bladder begins to fill up with fluids and stretch and expand, the cells are going to flatten out into like the squamous here, into the squamous looking one. So they start out when it's empty with cuboidal and then it's going to transition, hence the name, or change into squamous. So yeah, those are pretty cool. And that is all.